Welcome back to GoSycamores.com. This weekend would actually be the spring game for Indiana State football. It's hard to believe that spring football would be almost wrapping up, so it's time to go through and catch up with each of our coaches. He's the offensive coordinator, run game coordinator for Indiana State. It's Michael Switzer, also coaches the offensive line. Coach Switz, buddy, how you doing? You doing all right? Family hanging in there? Newborn doing okay? Doing great, uh, Luke. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, but uh, – uh, no, baby boy, uh, Bo, he's doing, he's doing well. And, um, Taylor's doing, doing awesome being uh, a great mom. And it's been a, a fun time and a, and a other, otherwise crazy time. So, uh, we've taken advantage of being able to be around our, uh, our baby. And it's, uh, it's been good to be around family and spend that time with family as well. You mentioned it. I know, obviously you consider this football team family and You've been a part of one, as you can see behind you at Ball State during your playing days, and those relationships are stuff you hold on to for a lifetime. But knowing this is something that no one's really ever gone through, at least it's still alive today, uh, how have you tried to make the most of this situation? Not really from a football perspective, but as you said, spending time with Bo, spending time with your newborn, spending time with Taylor, spending time with your family, to make the most of this difficult situation? Uh, you know, specifically to, you know, my personal family, um, you know, it's, 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 it's been a blessing and a, and, a, and a crazy time, like I said, to be able to spend that time with your, your child and, and your wife and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of FaceTiming with, um, you know, our, our, my parents and Taylor's parents and sisters and brothers and, you know, uh, a, a lot of that as well, which is good connecting uh, with personal family. But, um, a big part of it has been my football family, uh, like you mentioned. And, um, you know, when this first went down, you know, Coach Mallory was very, um, very persistent about making sure that, you know, we're not quite worried about football when we first got into it. All right. We're worried about the well-being of our players, worried about the well-being of their families and making sure that they're in, uh, you know, good situations are taken care of um, and all is good with them. So. That was really the main focus is, as this first, you know, sort, sort of went down was um, how are our guys and how are they doing? You know, what's their what's their uh, mental? You know, is, there, is everything good and how can we help out with that? And I think that was our prime focus. And I think that meant a lot to, um, you know, the players and, and their families as well. I know, um, you know, Coach Mallory has done a fantastic job of communicating not only to our players, but their families um, each week and keeping them. Uh, up to date with anything that's going on uh, surrounding Indiana State football. So um, I think any interaction that you can have at this point um, brings some kind of normalcy uh, to the situation. And you know, I can tell you when we get on Zooms and, um, you know, when the O-line gets together, uh, you know, everybody's excited to sit there and see each other and talk and uh, getting together as a full offense. You're seeing the faces you haven't seen for a while. And and the guys, you know, really enjoyed that. But um, you, you've got to bring some of that to it in terms of coming together, even if it is on a, a Zoom meeting uh, or something like that. Even though, Coach Switz, as you mentioned, you're not physically in practice at Memorial Stadium, but what have you liked about this virtual spring when you have met with your offensive line group just in terms of, getting that information in. And, and when you do talk football, even though that's not necessarily maybe the number one priority, you're checking in on them. But when you do talk football, what do you like about your group? Well, Luke, to start, we did obviously focus on the guys and making sure they were good. Uh, very quickly after we transitioned then to football um, and got into our spring installation schedule. So it really played out um, kind of nicely in terms of uh, the date that we first started meeting was our first date of spring ball. Uh, so what we tried to do, and I thought we did a really good job of, was staying on track in terms of the install schedule throughout spring and doing the same with our offense um, and all of our position groups is, is staying on track with that. Okay, And obviously, you know, installing to the guys stuff that we had already previewed a little bit in terms of some winter conditioning, which was good. Um, but making the most out of those installs, those cut-ups, um, and, and, and really teaching the fundamentals and techniques very specifically, okay? Um, now, we, while we didn't have a chance to see any of that film, obviously, through any of the spring ball, uh, what's been really unique, in, in my opinion, is the ability to really, really detail everything out, 
um, you know, after we've gone through our installation um, offensively, uh, you know, we, we, we got creative in terms of, you know, what do we want to do with our position group and, and how can we, um, you know, create a unique media environment, whether it's uh, focusing on base, 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 uh, football knowledge. Okay. So I've spent a ton of time in terms of um, defensive recognition with the offensive line specifically. Um, and, and, and looking not only at, you know, the defensive line in front of you, the linebackers in front of you, but, you know, how are we uh, recognizing uh, specific pressures, uh, fronts, coverages, and, and, and what those things uh, kind of paints the whole picture. Um, and, and it's allowed us to really broaden our football lens, meaning, you know, there's a lot more of the understanding the why maybe a defense does this or why offensively I'm calling this. Um, so I, I think it's been a really unique opportunity to kind of slow it down a little bit and, and look at, you know, small part, small part, bigger part, and then whole picture um, and, and, and really challenge those guys to, to understand and see it a little bit differently. So I've really enjoyed that aspect of it, of the guys, um, you know, kind of going about it a little bit differently in terms of what we're um, looking at and what we're detailing out. When you look at the big picture for yourself, Coach Switz, where do you feel you've grown the most as a coordinator at Indiana State? And maybe last year, what were some things that you took away from last year that you feel have really helped you in terms of your preparation for this year? You know, uh, I think it's been a, a process, and it is each year. I think you've got to take something out of it, whether it be positive or negative, um, year to year and game to game throughout the entire season. but. Um, you know, just the continuing, continuous comfortability of it and, and, and really getting in a, a groove, per se, throughout a game. And, and um, you know, you can study the opponent um, up and down and, and really have an idea what these guys are doing and, and feel really good about your plan and all that. But, you know, once you get to game day, some things can um, – obviously adjustments need to be made and all that kind of stuff. And that's where, you know, I, I've, I've got to take it to the next level in terms of that. And, uh, you know, we experimented last year towards the end of the season, you know, getting into the box and seeing it from a different perspective, uh, which I which I really enjoyed. Um, I've always called it from the field. Uh, so I, I'm excited uh, to continue doing that from the box um, with the, with that view. And I think that was really a big help towards the end of the season. And you saw some uh, uh, offensive success a little bit more as as that went on. So, you know, finding the comfortability aspect of it and, and working closely with the offensive staff uh, and, and, and gelling as a group. And, um, you know, that's a big part of it is, is, is making sure that, you know, we've all got confidence in each other, which we do, and, and, and working together very closely as well. So I think that was a big part of it, just continuing to, um, to get the feel for it and, 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 and feel comfortable with the guys um, that are coaching it as well. What do you feel was the biggest difference just in terms of, when that view does change, you know, I think fans at home or whomever they see, what's the difference from being field level to press box level for you? What was that difference like of where you've had one experience of calling plays on the sideline to all of a sudden it goes to the press box, obviously the view changes, but what more than just the obvious in the room being that the view changes for you? Uh, well, it's very specific coaching the offensive line as well. So, when you call it and you're coaching the offensive line, you know, you're, you're looking at five guys, um, in our case, uh, sometimes six and even seven offensive linemen on the field at once. Um, and, and, and you've got to see a lot. Okay? And, and, and whether some guys may look at it in terms of having a guy look at near field, far field, um, you know, all those kind of things of seeing, hey, where are the breakdowns? You know, I've got to be able to communicate to the offensive line after each drive and say, hey, this is what we got. This is what we need to do. These are the adjustments we need to make. So being able to see that from the sideline uh, can be challenging at times. And, and, and obviously having that next play call ready uh, is, is a big deal as well. So sometimes you're, you're, you're up and down looking at the call sheet and, and seeing that from the sideline can be challenging. Um, now where I did like it is obviously being on the field with the offensive line, going through the adjustments, going through the drives, um, going through the looks. That's where I think is, 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 is imperative um, throughout a game. But, you know, when you move up to the box and, and you're seeing it from a whole new perspective, you see it all. Um, you know, it's a little bit more of a controlled environment. Um, you know, it's not as um, uh, hectic 
uh, up in the box that is, a, is, a, is on the sidelines with a lot of people. Um, so it's a little bit calmer environment, which, um, you know, I thought was good, but just being able to see it all and specifically the defense. I mean, you know, everything you're doing offensively is to attack the defense and, and now you get a, a clean picture uh, and, and, a, and a much better view uh, of understanding what's going on. Um, and, and, and that allowed me to then communicate to, you know, the rest of our coaching staff or through another coach to uh, the offensive line down the sideline, whatever it may be, being able to see that, that full field, um, you know, really, really changed it for me. And, and I think that was something that was really important. So that's kind of what goes through my head as you, as you look at it from the, from the outside looking in is, is being able to see uh, all of it comparable to having to, you know, kind of be field view and, and, and focus in on one position and then see it all as well. So. So it wasn't harder calling plays when your booth was next to mine and you could hear me hooting and hollering during a game? No, you brought the energy. You got me going. I said I got to get this guy juiced up. So uh, I like hearing your voice up there. Uh, Coach Woods, last year, of course, heading into the year, you know, one of the biggest points or one of the biggest reasons of optimism was how much experience you had coming up on the offensive line. Obviously, this year that experience has to be replaced. Now, you do get Big Tuna coming back from injury. But other than just Big Tuna coming back, what do you think are going to be some key areas for your offensive line and maybe what you've liked from the guys that are coming back despite you know you're going to have to replace a lot of game time experience? Well, I mean, Isaiah coming back, uh, you know, provides some experience, but um, you can't look past uh, guys like Jose Vasquez, um, who got a ton of experience as a redshirt freshman last year and, and played pretty well. Um, same could be said for Carter Heron. Uh, he comes in and starts multiple games for us last year when guys go down and get injured um, and provides some some great experience, in my opinion, in terms of redshirt freshman as well. So those two guys who have played um, last year and stepped in, I'm really excited about. Um, you know, a guy like Isaiah, uh, who, who's got his sixth year in terms of uh, the injury last year, you know, him taking advantage of this, this opportunity to come back around um, and, and the experience that he uh, provides as well. Um, and we've got, you know, a couple other guys who have got some playing time, Fred Fabricius a little bit. So, um, we do have a little of experience, but, um, I'm, I'm very excited about this group, um, and, and, and the newness to it and, and, uh, the hunger for, uh, you know, wanting to get out there and wanting to go play and wanting to be a guy, wanting to be one of the five, um, wanting to be one of the guys who maybe plays as a sixth. Um, but, uh, the biggest thing is, you know, we've always talked about building the depth of this program um, and, and being able to next man up mentality, be ready to play um, and, and, and have an idea of what's going on. And, and I think that's what we've done consistently in the offensive line room and as an offense overall, but um, you know, guys like Jose Vasquez and Carter Heron stepped in last year, not expecting to start, started multiple, multiple games for us and, and, and played well. So it's what you set up in terms of, uh, that basis uh, of knowledge, of understanding, um, of getting those guys reps throughout practice, whatever it may be, um, that allows those guys to jump in and be successful. Uh, now, that same being said is, is for the rest of the guys that are in the room as well. Um, any of our younger guys, you know, obviously spring ball was, uh, is a huge deal for, uh, for any team in terms of development. And when you lose that, you know, that kind of hurts you a little bit, but everybody's going through it. So, um, it's going to be a, a process that needs to be sped up when we get back, um, whatever that is. So uh, looking at the you know, position group, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of moving parts early on for sure. And, and uh, you know, some questions will be answered early on. And I'm going to put the pressure on the guys in terms of uh, this is different. You know, we don't have spring ball to uh, sit there and prove yourself here, prove yourself there. It's going to be, it's going to be fast. Um, fast on us, and, and, and the guys got to be ready and understand that once we get back uh, as a group, whenever that is. So, One of the things that really stood out to me last year, Coach Switz, is when I caught up with you at season's end, and we talked about how different the offense looked from week one to the last week of the season. It was a total 180 in the packages you used and the players you utilized, and, and maybe not so much players you utilized, just different packages that you would use. But you said – Luke, that's the goal of any season. You know, even if you're having maybe more success early on, you want to continue to evolve as the year goes along. 
So for you guys, after last year and now into this offseason, again, even though no on-field time, where would you like to see this offense evolve, Coach Switz, into this year and utilize the weapons that you still have? I mean, that's really it, Luke, uh, you know, and talk about utilizing your weapons, utilizing the players. Um, you know, it's my job to put these guys in position to make big plays. And, and very simply, that's, that's all I'm looking for this offense to do, is be able to make big plays, score points, uh, and be consistent. You know, you, you've always got a plan, uh, you know, to start any season, to start any spring ball. Uh, this is where we start. This is where I want to end. Um, and as you look at last year in terms of where we started and how some things changed, like I said, that's part of football. And, and of course, you'd like to be, um, you know, have some consistency throughout the season. And this is what you do. And this is how you do it and, uh, and have success in doing so. But um, depending on how that season goes, you may have to uh, switch it up. You may have to implement some new schemes, some new uh, packages, some new um, things that are, are, are helping you uh, mix it up. Um, so. While I'd like to be base and, and, and very consistent in what we do, and that's always how we'll start, um, there will be some wrinkles um, week to week. There'll be some wrinkles. You know, we'll start fall camp or, like I said, whenever that starts. Yeah. Um, and install one is going to be install one, install two, install two. Uh, but as you get going and you find out, oh, uh, this guy's good at this, we need to put him in position to make those plays. We may now branch off to a little bit more focus to that scheme, to that um, player. Okay. So it's not always, uh, concrete in terms of what you're going to do. You got to make sure that you take full advantage of, um, all the guys on your roster and all the guys on the team that can make those plays. So I keep a very open mind in terms of, you know, any of our game plan or anything that we do offensively. Um, it's all rooted and, uh, you know, our base offense and, and all that, but, um, I'll be very, very quick to, to jump out and, and, and change something up for the, uh, success of the offense, for the success of our players. So that's priority number one, Luke, is, is just making sure that these guys know exactly what to do, exactly how to do it. Uh, let these guys just uh, play fast, play physical, um, and, and, and go make plays. And, and that's the focus for us going forward is to, uh, to be very clean, streamlined, and, and take advantage uh, where we can versus defenses and what they allow us. Of course, also integrating Coach Castle, uh, who comes in as the quarterback coach and passing game coordinator. Uh, even though you guys, again, uh, stay in the obvious, not being able to maybe work some things out on the field, how have your guys' relationship in terms of communication and coming together as an offense and building that identity during this time? Uh, you know, had a relationship with Jeff Pryor um, and, uh, you know, a really outstanding football coach, really cerebral football coach, very smart guy. Um, and very detail oriented. So we had a lot of time uh, since he's been hired before. You know, obviously we were, uh, you know, sent home uh, to work things out uh, in the offices and, and really talk through uh, schemes and thoughts and, and, and the why and how. Um, so I feel great in terms of where we're at uh, with his addition. I mean, he brings great um, knowledge to the game and, and, and playing the quarterback position um, and seeing it from that perspective. He can he can pull from a lot of his experiences as well. So um, he's been a great addition uh, to the staff um, and really excited about, you know, his, uh, his knowledge and his experience, um, you know, really coaching from that position and, and, and specifically being in the pass game coordinator position, you know, um, I think he'll really bring a lot to this offense and really excited about him. Coach Switz, I know your grilling game is always on point. Have you been able to expand that grilling game during this time? I have, I have, I've, uh, I've been on the, uh, the charcoal, the Traeger, um, you know, smoked, uh, smoked a little bit, some, some brisket, some full chicken. So, um, definitely, uh, uh, getting creative out there on the grill as well. So keeping it, uh, interesting week to week and, uh, doing some different deals. So no, it's been awesome. You know, we have a pretty special relationship because I think you're the only one that honestly knows how much milk I can buy at a store. Yeah, I uh, actually told before you got on with the offensive line last week, I told him the story of your four gallons in your shopping cart uh, at Baszler's. And, and I don't even think I said hello to you. I just said, why do you have four gallons of milk in your cart? And your answer was to drink it. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty uh, interesting there. But, hey, I respect it, man. You got to get the uh, got to get the milk in. 
got to get the milk in, got to get that calcium in somehow, buddy. Uh, Coach Switz, really glad you, number one, Taylor, Bo, everybody's doing well, everybody's healthy and safe, and of course, your guys too. And even though we're not talking in person, glad you could take some time virtually to do this and look forward to getting back together whenever that time is, buddy. No question. Excited for it and excited for our guys. And obviously just thinking about everybody during this time and making sure uh, uh, they're taking care of themselves and, and, and excited for the future. And uh, whenever that is, uh, we'll all be ready. So thanks, Luke.